but um, but it was a lot of fun. It was something that was so different for me, um, and it was such a challenge. But uh, hopefully, I pulled it off, kind of. Oh. Netflix should be ashamed of themselves. How fucking dare you place this movie in the Netflix spotlight, holding this up as your piece de resistance? I don't even entirely know what the Netflix spotlight means. All I know is that's where I saw the movie and that's why we watched it. I watched the movie Secret Obsession, starring Brenda Song with my girlfriend a couple days ago. And by the end of it, she turned to me and said, so I'm gonna be mad if you don't make a video about this. I say this often, but there is so much to unpack here. The best way I can describe this movie is negligent. Somebody wrote out the plot and then did jack shit with the script. It's the safest, suckiest way to take on this plot that, mind you, has been done before. Much better. Should I just start going through the movie? So I can show you why I burst out laughing multiple times during this movie? All right. Get comfy, because this is going to be a long fucking review. By the way, most of these types of thrillers that play it super safe are PG and R RP, RPG, RPG, brand new RPG that just came out, Raid Shadow Legends, sponsored! This video is once again sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. This is like our 30th time working together. I mean, we're, we're good pals. And we treat our good pals with respect, especially when they take us to a world of dark, fantasy and realism. I mean, picture the sunken place where you can collect over 400 champions. Picture the upside down with a fully voice story campaign. Numbers don't lie. Nearly 10 million players have downloaded this game in three months. These graphics are phenomenal and with such a variety of characters, it's amazing. Raid almost has a perfect score on the Play Store and there is a new highly anticipated update that is now live. And how about this? There's a new rewards program. So for new players who sign up, they get a daily login reward for the first 90 days in the game. So go to the video description, click on those special links, and get rewarded with 50,000 silver and a free Epic Champion as part of their new player reward program. iOS or Android, don't matter. It's free to play. Get to it quick because I've been working on my strats and I'm telling you, it's not looking good for you guys. Now about this movie. During the very first scene, red flags were going off left and right in my head, warning me that this bad boy was a dump in disguise. And I foolishly ignored the signs because this movie was propped up as Netflix's new star player. I mean, I thought the spotlight meant something. Like, hey, no promises, but this will most likely be good. I wasn't expecting the next Shawshank, but at least a decent watch before I went to bed. Here are some of those red flags. This movie just jumps right into it and it immediately looks and feels like a parody. I thought this was gonna be a fake out of some sort, but no, this is actually supposed to be intense. You might not know what I mean. Watch like 15 seconds of the movie, listen to the stock soundtrack and tell me this couldn't end up being a Mountain Dew commercial. Running away from serial killers can be tough. Give yourself a boost when you do the do. Let me pick the picture in this opening scene. Brenda Song tries to use a payphone to dial 911. The call doesn't go through because payphone. Also, what you're not gonna convince me is that this 2019 woman that is escaping a home invasion without her cell phone has fucking loose change handy. I mean, payphones don't charge for emergency calls regardless, but you put in those coin sound effects. So that's what I'm going off of. Now, am I nitpicking? No, this is the first thing we see, a payphone. This payphone scene. It's not my fault this film is a decade late. This shit was old when Brenda was pissing off Mr. Mosby. Next red flag. This movie is cliche central. The victim hiding in a stall while the bad guy slowly kicks open each door. Faulty lighting because why not? I mean, they're by a payphone, so I guess this whole area sucks. And this one's the kicker. She's in the last stall, obviously. So out of complete inconvenience to the killer, he slowly turns around leaves his back vulnerable for a couple seconds. Keep in mind, if she's vigilant, she can fling this bitch open and at the very least incapacitate him. And then kicks in the door so he can be defenseless until he crisscross turns around to stab her. And hey, look, that all helped her get away. Fucking show off. Thought the cliche stopped there? Nope. She runs to get away, but oh, the door's locked and she left the keys in her car. Wait, this is her car? Wait, rewind the movie. Wait, 
Wait. The movie starts with her in a vehicle that was perfectly functional as far as we're made aware, and while being chased down by another person in a car as well, she pulled over to use a fucking payphone? Just floor it and find some civilization, Brenda. Find an area with a lot of witnesses. Make your way to the Tipton if you have to. You're telling me I'm supposed to take this entire movie seriously when the conflict could have been completely avoided in the first 30 seconds. This movie gets stupider the more and more I pay attention, and I'm assuming that's what they didn't want us to do. I still haven't passed the three minute mark, mind you. I mean, this scene can't get much worse, so let's speed through it. Convenient rock is convenient. By the way, your knuckles should look like Rocky Three after doing that, but look at these cute ass hands. Unfazed, I guess. Okay, okay, now that's a nitpick, but it, the attention to detail would have been nice. The bad guy walks slow because murderers in a hurry to murder aren't menacing enough, I guess. Also, he disappears a couple seconds after this, which, if this is Freddy Krueger, all right, we get it. But we end up finding out that this is just a guy who doesn't have powers and is also really stupid sometimes. He can't do this. Don't do that. Especially when he's not moving quick, ever. <laughs> For fuck's sake, just skip to the accident. <laughs> and that concludes the worst opening scene ever. Okay, now hold on, Brenda, stay right there. Stay right there. I gotta, I gotta tell him about something else, hold on. Now my biggest problem with this movie is the twist. I've dealt with movies in the past before that had a twist, but they were executed very shittily. Not a word, just, but you know what I mean. They trace the call and finally we get our twist. And I know what you're thinking. This already sounds stupid. Oh, but <laughs> wait! This movie has now been added to that pile. After the accident, her husband rushes to the hospital and it turns out that Jennifer has amnesia. So he stays by her side day by day to try and remind her of who he is and all of the details in her life. Now here is the glaring issue with that. The movie cannot decide whether or not it wants you to know the reveal. Let me explain because it's kind of complicated. Now at points, I thought the movie was trying to fool me because surprise, surprise, this is not actually her husband. And sometimes he tries to sell the role of her actual husband. So with that, I guess this movie wants me to think that it's her husband, right? And the movie also throws in this character. It's this rough and tough looking guy with a chain wallet that tries to drop off flowers for Jennifer. He talks in his Sons of Anarchy voice and they play this stupid ass villain music every single time he is on screen. Can I help you, sir? I'm here about the young woman that was in that car accident a couple of nights ago. Off Route 33. And you are? A concerned party. He's a fucking red herring and beyond corny. But with that, the movie wants me to think he is the killer and he is the husband. Right? No. That's not right. Why would you, th no. It is extremely obvious that this man is not her husband. From the second he walks in the hospital, his very first scene, if he was supposed to sell that role, he did not. Maybe I'm just a real sleuth, but here's what fucks with me. A lot of his actions and behavior make it blatantly obvious that he is impersonating her husband. I mean, the cover of the movie makes it obvious what's gonna happen, which is fine. This type of movie doesn't always need to be a twist, but if you're gonna do that, then why do something so unnecessary like, throw in this character solely to throw us off. If this whole bamboozle is not meant to be a secret to the audience, why try to mislead us at all? Just put all your focus into making this interesting. Now you may think I'm overreacting to something so minor, but trust me, it is so frustrating. We're with Jennifer and the detective throughout the movie, slowly finding more and more clues as to who this person really is and how he managed this whole operation. That should be the point when we already know beforehand that he is a fraud. But for the first half hour of the movie, this supposed bad guy according to the soundtrack is a thing until this guy kills him and as an extra fuck you it is never revealed who this guy was and why he knew or even cared about jennifer that's what pisses me off you lazy assholes now my guess as to what happened is that the people behind this movie wanted to try and throw you off however they did a shit job of it because someone told Mike Vogel, hey, whenever you're on camera, be ominous as fuck. I think when this movie got to the marketing team, they saw that and decided, hey, let's not market this as a twist because then people will be disappointed because it's not that great a twist. So let's just make it pretty obvious with the marketing. Whatever, people will forget about that leather jacket guy anyways. Brenda, you still there? 
hey, you should probably get up. We're moving on. Some people were bothered on social media by the stock footage here of Silverado Canyon because it's actually Boulder, Colorado. Same thing. <laughs> Are you guys actually surprised? They didn't give two shits about the actual meat of the film. You think they're trying to break deadlines to send drones over here to get establishing shots? You're very much overestimating how much they care about this shit. By the way, I've purposely avoided showing any clips of the detective up to this point, just so I could say- The Aussie guy is the fucking detective. I'm not gonna outright disrespect Dennis Haysbert like that. He's got a long resume, but I mean, if you ask the average citizen, he's the Aussie guy. And honestly, this entire movie, I was just waiting for him to break the fourth wall. I mean, you're really pussied out, guys. That would have sold me. Are you in good films? So they tried to give the detective a character arc and it ended up being a massive slap in the face. And I'm still gonna mention all of it because I want you to feel what I felt. So this character is basically the detective. He lost his daughter a while ago, buys her a gift every birthday still. And they even throw in these flashback quotes just in case we couldn't tell by the photo frame with the light beaming over it. Female, African-American, Are you in good hands? Apparently not, because he let her die. I don't think there's one strong actor in this movie, but then again, I don't think the script was there either. Brenna Song did okay, but they unfortunately made her character an idiot. I think Mike Vogel was just severely miscast for this role. I just don't buy him as a psycho villain. Dennis Haysbert's fine, then there's only like two other characters, kind of, so that sucks. There you go. And eventually I worked up the nerve to ask you out. <coughs> I don't know what I hate to think more, that this was supposed to be a good Photoshop job or that she believes this Photoshop job. Hey, I forgot to ask, have you talked to my parents? I mean, they must be worried they haven't heard from me. Honey, they, they uh, passed away a couple years ago. What? Yeah, there was a, there was a fire and uh, they never made it out, I'm sorry. If you don't mind, just like a moment alone. Yeah, of course. I'll just be right outside here. I love how she just takes this for face value. Oh, they died in a fire? Lit. You don't wanna, I don't know, contact a family member and hear it from them? Maybe grieve or something? No? Just a lip quiver? That's cool. So the detective calls in Scary Beard Man as the detective claims he was a witness of Jennifer's accident. And as far as the audience saw, there was only four witnesses. The killer, the driver, token black guy, and not this guy. So you are... No time to answer that, we got a recovery montage to get to. So once they get home, not husband tells Jennifer she quit her job before they got married. And keep in mind, they haven't recovered where her phone is, so she says... Really? No job, no family. Once again, taken for face value. She didn't even ask what she did, if they're good financially, can I see my bank statement? You might say I'm reaching, but it feels like Jennifer doesn't care about anything in her day-to-day -day life. Hey, did I have a gym membership? What do we do for fun? Where do you work? When's the last time I saw my parents? Do you care? He said your parents died in a fire, not your family's hometown was nuked. And maybe it was. That's why they had to use Colorado instead. But seriously, siblings, cousins, aunts, grandparents? Hello? Does Facebook exist in this world? Can I go on a computer to reach out to all the people that matter in my life? I mean, shit, can I go on your phone to check my shit? Why aren't you asking these pretty important questions, Brenda? Is it because the script won't let you? Russell goes to teach this much, much stronger man a lesson to stay away from his wife, because now that the movie introduced this character they plan nothing to do with, he needs to die. Stay away from my wife! Car alarms, am I right? That's like granny attracting. Everybody knows that. You let those bad boys sawn off for too long, your driveway's gonna be filled with travel scooters. Anyone out here? Hello? Hello? Anyone out Did I mention I hate Jennifer as a character in this movie? She already has suspicions about everything and then sees her apparent husband burying something in the back in the dead of night. So it's probably a good time to do something, you know, take action, try to reach out to police or, you know, those f friends and family you're neglecting. But no, she's just a little snippy and reserved with him in the morning. But even that's washed away quickly because all of a sudden, part of her memory's coming back. So I think I'm gonna head into town today. 
grab a few things. I'm gonna grab you that phone. Orange juice. Fair squeeze? I'm right, aren't I? There it is. <laughs> See? I told you it'd all come back. I remembered our morning beverage, so now everything's fine. Hey Jennifer, you wanna know what else was freshly squeezed? Let's talk about Allstate, who is determined, incompetent, and lucky as hell all in one. Hold on, let me figure out what everybody's name is. Detective Frank Page, Russell, I already knew Jennifer. Yeah, it's everybody, I forgot. Detective Frank, after already speaking to Russell twice and not dismissing him as a suspect, speaking to multiple witnesses and having his fair share of skepticism throughout, decides just now to look up Russell's name. And what do you know, it's a fake. Sorry, this just irked me every single time I heard it. I love you forever a day. I just really wanted to say how this is not a cute saying. It's just not. I know your writer watched Avengers, heard I love you 3000, and thought he could mimic it, but no. Iron Man fucking died to make that shit cute. Jennifer's looking at deep fakes and getting flashback head. It doesn't work. Did I mention I hate Jennifer as a character in this movie? This one's a nice little punch in the dick. She's looking at all these crudely photoshopped pictures, reminiscent of my old thumbnails, and she sees a photo where Russell's reflection shows a different color of hair and Jennifer's reaction to figuring out her whole life is a lie is... That's weird. Because she still doesn't get it. That's weird. He's either photoshopped everything or he's a vampire, kind of. Either way, I should probably leave. Looks like Russell Williams gave the hospital the wrong address. Oh, maybe he just made a mistake on the forms. Tell me something. Did anyone actually run the victim's prints? We didn't have to. The husband identified her. Excuse me? Nobody tried to figure out who this woman was? The hospital and the police didn't verify her identity once? You let a random man claiming to be her husband tell you who she is? Were you aware that the city's authorities were bungling bozos or did this all just kind of fall in place for you? Also, one more time, excuse me? You ran in there saying my wife Jennifer just got hit by a car. The nurse, without hesitation, said she's an OR, even though she apparently doesn't know her name. Maybe she trusted you and had only one patient who just got Carmageddon off the road. But still, who are you billing? When this shit happens, they ask for insurance. They need info. They'll run that shit right then and there. You had this woman under your watch for an entire recovery montage and you never asked shit? Since Jennifer apparently needs more red flags, Russell snaps on her when she won't give him poom poom, squeezing her arm, complaining how he waited in the hospital day after day and he can't even clap cheeks. Well, you know, I was wondering one thing. Shoot. Since Jennifer had no ID, how did Russell prove he was her husband? Okay, it says here in the doctor's notes that, that he showed some family photos and identified a back tattoo. Oh, so now I'm supposed to believe that multiple people thought these photos were real. Got it. Also identified a back tattoo? Is that all it takes, America? Apparently any of her Instagram followers can claim her at the hospital like it's a fucking lost and found. Better watch out, Macaulay. The nurse sends Frank the security footage and, whoa, security? I'm surprised too. Oh look, Russell showed up in a white pickup truck. The same truck witnesses said they saw at the scene. Man, there's a lot of evidence piling up against this guy, like your only suspect. <laughs> and since this movie's already imploding, I'm just gonna throw another one in the mix. According to the movie, Russell showed up to the hospital with that photo book. How'd he do that? How did he invade her home, chase her down, tow her car away from the scene, and rush to the hospital in time to catch her in OR. And also in the midst of all of that, find the time to find her photo book, take multiple photos in front of a green screen, Photoshop your head over all of them, print them out, assuming they have color ink and photo paper, and properly place them in the photo book. And no, don't try and tell me that he already had this book before, because that means he burglarized their home at one point. But guess what? That's not mentioned, is it? Meaning the movie is expecting me to believe that he did all of that on the way to the hospital. Let me make this very clear. Fuck you, movie. Defend this movie. I dare you. Defend it. I'm sorry, this is just disrespectful to the viewer. And they don't stop there. Detective man walks into a tattoo shop to detect some shit. No, I'm more interested in ink. Heritage, huh? Yeah, you do them? I can do anything you want. Can you tell me what that means? 
I'm sure you could have just asked, you douche. By the way, the tattoo on Jennifer's body is her maiden name because actual detective work, psh, spell it out for me, chief. With her maiden name, Frank can visit Jennifer's parents' house, so he goes over there and... What the fuck? Are these mummies? Well, I mean, I know one of them's her mummy. Dad jokes. So assuming Russell killed them before invading Jennifer's house, unless he did that also on the way to the hospital, um, they've been decaying for an entire recovery montage and nearly four nights now. And you're the first one to find them, detective? What can I say? You're on a roll, my dude. By the way, I'm just gonna assume this guy had no family either or friends. Or a job. Did I mention I hate Jennifer as a character in this movie? So she finally decides to care about living, so she searches Russell's pockets for clues while he's like five feet away in this scene where she's talking to him like it's a sitcom. Do you um, mind going out and grabbing some groceries? No, not at all. I'd be happy to. Uh, it's wine? <laughs> she sneaks his wallet and lighter away, and when he leaves, he locks the door from the outside. Yeah, I don't know, that's a thing in this world. Can also just say another little thing that bothers me in, in, in moments like this, where they feel the need to spoon feed something to the audience. We hear him lock the door. We see her reaction to him locking the door. She tries to open it and fails because of the locked door. And they still feel the need to have her say, she looks at the wallet and it appears that Russell has covered his tracks because his ID isn't in there. There's probably credit cards, but let's give that one a mulligan for the sake of this scene. So hear me out. The mastermind behind this all, who created this potential lifelong facade in such a short amount of time, who got away with four murders, who kidnapped a woman in front of so many authority figures, who took care of every loose end possible, left her ID in his wallet. Even though him removing his ID from the wallet means he clearly anticipated this happening but he left her fucking id in there by the way i forgot to mention he has a security camera set up in the room that he can access from his laptop which i would assume you could also access on your phone meaning he could watch her every move which would probably be a smart thing to do after you locked her in the room she's clearly gonna retaliate in some way why have you stopped trying why are you stupid now been spending too much time with jennifer and we are finally an hour into the movie <clears throat> Did I mention I hate Jennifer as a character in this movie? <laughs> Clearly realizing she's being lied to and in danger, she chooses to not leave the house. Now let's go on Russell's computer whose password is her real name. That's my genius boy Russell back at it again. And they even have the nuts to show us this photo again like she didn't fucking get it the first time. Frank figures everything out the same time Jennifer does and it turns out Russell's just a jealous co-worker and that's it, that's the movie, nothing else. Why bother? Please break the fourth wall. Break the fourth wall. Break the fourth wall. Break it, please. Jennifer takes her sweet ass time here. Not like there's a murderer coming home soon. Oh look, there's no internet because the router's cut. And just because I'm annoying, uh, these types of cameras need Wi-Fi to function. What is that, zero lag? Crystal clear streaming? Powered by magic? Jennifer finally decides to go outside and what do you know, he didn't give you a functioning phone. Who would've thought? Shocker, I know. Hey, I've hobbled all around the house, up and down the stairs, but this patch of dirt was the one that got me. Is that a dead body? Oh, that's what he was burying at 3 a.m. I thought he was gonna surprise me with daisies. This scene is awful in every way. If you need proof that this movie's not good, just skip to about uh, an hour and four minutes around there. Watch that scene. That's all you need. Wait, what did you do to my phone? Wait, Shh, what happened to the internet? Don't, don't what you... get so worked up. Listen, 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 listen. Let's no. take your medication, okay? And then no, I, I don't want to take the medication. I don't, I don't, okay? don't want to rest. This scene should be a crazy boiling point as Jennifer just realized this man is not who he claims to be. And it's treated like a cartoon. So Russell gets angry and ties her bad ankle to the bed with like a bike chain and he leaves. Which begs the question, what's the goal here, Russell? To live in harmony as if this is your actual wife? Because I think it's pretty obvious by now that's not gonna happen because the nurse told you that she was gonna start getting her memory back little by little. Was the goal poom poom? Because without sounding dark, you could have had it by now. What did you want out of this? It never looks like you're having a great time with her anyway. Do you even like her? By the way, Jennifer breaks out of the thing by obliterating her already busted ankle and she can walk on it Im immediately. Hello? Jennifer finds her car, her phone, and Russell comes home. Huh. Still dead. 
Did I mention I hate Jennifer as a character in this movie? Jennifer is outside. Russell is going inside and is not aware she has escaped. And I know the movie is desperately trying to make me believe this is a guarded fortress with 40 foot walls and barbed wire, but it is simply not. Look at all of these angles we have been shown. One of them has to lead to a potential escape. And don't tell me she is refusing to do that because of her ankle, because if the movie needed her to run hurdles, she would probably do it. Also, I'm not blessed enough in life to know how these things work, but I'm assuming there's a button and or multiple buttons that can open up the front that she has access to. The reason I'm bitching about all of that is because her master plan is to run back in the house, beat him to the room, and pretend she's still chained up even though her dumbass put duct tape over her ankle. Oh hey, didn't think you'd be back so soon. I wasn't escaping. Hey, before this plan falls apart, someone's at the front gate. And call me crazy, but one of these buttons might open that front gate. Rich technology, I got no clue how it works. Russell, this is Detective Page. Can you open up the gate? I wanna talk. Hey, it's Detective Frank Page, and it, I'm so fucking mad right now. For some reason, everyone in this movie just becomes stupider and stupider as time goes on. Detective Frank Page, the only guy in this movie that I thought had some common sense. Let me just quickly remind you, Detective Frank Page discovered two bodies, discovered a man lying about his identity, discovered his potential motive for murder, so he shows up to the house in the family truckster with zero backup. Do you make good plans? This movie sucks. I don't know if I made that obvious yet, but uh, it does. And there's often moments in these movies where I feel like they were specifically put there to irk me, like this one. Eagle Eye McGee over here spots a tiny crease in the last thing he should be looking at, just so the movie could jerk itself off like, <laughs> yeah, we thought of this too. Also, fuck you, movie. Frank's just wandering around, not even pondering the thought that this murderer could have his scope on him right now. He just walks over so we can see, oh shit, a white pickup truck with a winch. Now I know it's him, I should probably start caring about my life. Jennifer spots Frank and tells him there's a door in the back, and Russell, being psychic or whatever the fuck he is, was already posted up back there. And since Frank is 92 years old, he doesn't hear Russell run up to him and cock his arm back. I mean, it's not like detectives are supposed to be the people that are most aware of their surroundings or whatever. And this part just annoys me personally because this sick sadistic son of a bitch never hurts Jennifer and I know that sounds stupid hear me out I hate that they're avoiding any real violence to pull off a lighter rating I want to see this guy be violent I wanted him to slam her foot against the table here this guy's insane and a serial killer and he still just looks like Someone got his order wrong at Wendy's, so he's really frustrated he can't enjoy his meal. Force her to go up the stairs after this scene. That shit'll make you look crazy. But no, you carry her up the stairs. Brenda looks bored. <laughs> and I know someone might say, well, it's supposed to be more emotional mental torture than physical. And that's fine, but frankly, the writing and acting are not qualified for that. Nope, not even after that. Still not convinced. Especially when he flees the room immediately after. Why are you even leaving the room at this point? Oh, to get some really soft rope to tie her up. This is like the type of rope magicians use. Enough about me. <laughs> I love you. Forever and a day, right? Right. Don't even know what the fuck that means. I love how the movie's like, yeah, you're creepy and in love, so light a candle. Trust me, that's what villains do. Now blow it out. Holy shit, I'm turned on. Oh, that's why I did that, to keep giving Jennifer a chance to escape. Love it. Something about what you said before. I never knew you felt that way about me. You never gave us a chance. I can see how much you care about me now. And I have been such a burden. No, you haven't been a burden. You know, love takes time. Who are you? Can I get you anything? Maybe something to drink? See, this is where the serial killer keeping her hostage would backhand her and say, you think I'm a fucking idiot? But this movie took a different route where he is a fucking idiot. Detective Frank is alive for some reason. <laughs> Apparently five murders is too much. He wakes up in a freezer and breaks out of it because it'd sure be awkward if you left him in there. This scene looks like a Wile E. Coyote cartoon. And I guess that makes two people with the awareness of a sandal. At least he stayed consistent. This next scene, I know, how's the movie not over yet? <laughs> this next scene is probably the best scene in the movie. Please enjoy. Jennifer? Jennifer? <laughs> Should I even bother with a joke at this point? Wait, what? Is this season eight Aria? Jennifer has gotten and gotten 
And now... And she is... Faster than before, got it. So proving my point earlier, she runs into the woods. That probably would have been a solid idea when he wasn't around those nine different times. Ah, the classic rock bait into fat log swing combo. Works every- nah, oh, fuck. Oh, now she's incapacitated. Those softball leaves the finishing blow, not your cedarwood stairs. Also, this is a fucking sledgehammer. All state should be with the almighty. You two should be so fucking dead. Sure, there's about 22 more things to complain about in this final scene, but we're just gonna let these two aggressively massage each other until Jennifer finally does something useful. <laughs> Are you in good hands? Are you in good hands? Are you in good hands? The movie ends with the quote, I'll love you forever and a day. And I'm just really glad that Jennifer's real husband is dead because that is not cute. It's not. Stop forcing it. It will never be cute. No. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Fuck you. No, 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 no. Fuck you. Do not pretend that Allstate man had a character arc. You did nothing to earn this ending. Detective? Fuck him. Fuck his daughter. Are you in good hands? Just say it. Save this movie, Dennis. It's the only way. Say it. Look at the camera and fucking say it. And that's the end of my really long review. The movie is bad, but I hope you thought my review of it was good. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It is the easiest way to support this video and subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to my new patrons for supporting the boy. Really appreciate you guys. Follow my Twitter, support the sponsor. And shout out to Curb Stomp Mania for retweeting my last video tweet. As always, I am Mr. Gigi and I am out. Next level.